uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can create a uh, instruction memory and also a data memory. For creating an instruction memory, uh, we need to um, create a read-only uh, memory. Um, to create a read-only memory, um, follow the simulation um, PROM uh, wizard. And then uh, select uh, PROM, programmable random access memory and uh, then uh, set up the configuration of the memory. Um, we pick the configuration that is uh, right for the processor that we are going to um, make in this project. Um, the address lines are four bit and bits per word are 16 bit for our uh, processor. And we leave the option enter hex data manually because we're going to insert the instructions, uh, sequence of instructions manually here. Uh, here we can insert the sequence of instructions uh, manually here. Um, we type in the PROM content uh, here. Um, we enter uh, space after every four hex digits. Uh, we start by um, typing the first um, instruction in hex, and then space, then second instruction, then a space, then the third instruction, space, and then the last instruction, the four instructions that we are going to run according to uh, this uh, sample. If we have more instructions, we can insert them all here. Then uh, you can check out the format help to see um, other ways of entering the data. Um, next, we need to specify a library to attach our symbol to. Uh, this is uh, the symbol itself. Let's uh, name the symbol IMEM for instruction memory. We open the library that we have been working on so far. CPU project library, and I'm attaching IMEM to this uh, project. Okay, our symbol is created. Um, drag and drop the symbol and uh, test that. Uh, you can read all the instructions from this symbol. Um, we attach a hex keyboard for input. The inputs are addressed to the instruction word. And the output is the instruction word itself. To um, collect the instruction word and see the instruction word as, a, as one single uh, word in hex, uh, create a new breakout, a 16-bit breakout. So I go with A0 to 15. And this will be the breakout that shows the instruction work that we are reading. Let's just stop and start the simulation uh, and read the first instruction word. Um, check the show values so we can see what value is on the output of instruction memory. What we expect is when we are pointing to zero instruction, uh, the first instruction in the memory, we should be reading the instruction word that we typed in, which is uh, AD100 in hex. The second instruction, um, AD201. The third instruction, 0A61. And the last instruction, we only have four instructions in instruction memory, 4302. So that confirms the instruction memory is working as expected. Uh, when we are putting the processor together, we drag and drop the instruction memory from the symbols and we use that later. Save this file as the instruction memory. This is a test bench for instruction memory and the symbol is already in the library.
Next, we are going to make a data memory. Data memory is a read and write uh, enabled memory. Let's create a new circuit. And then uh, memories are uh, predefined symbols available in LogicWorks uh, from simulation. Uh, select PROM, RAM, PLA, wizard to create a new um, data memory. For uh, creating a data memory, select RAM. And then here we specify the configuration that works for our processor. Um, address line for our processor is 8-bit. Uh, we need one chip enable and uh, bits per word are 8-bit in our processor. Um, go to the next menu, leave the other options unchecked. Uh, if we can name for the new symbol we're creating, uh, DMEM for data memory, and I'm storing in the CPU project. That is it. This is the data memory that we are uh, going to use. Um, data memory has uh, several pins. So there is a chip enable, which is set to zero. This is active low. So this is set to zero when we uh, have the memory module enabled. Uh, there is a write enable pin, which is zero or active whenever we want to write a new data uh, into uh, the memory. Uh, then there are three groups of uh, inputs or three buses. The first set of bus is 8-bit data in. This is the data that we can write into the memory. Uh, the set of A7 to A0 are the addresses. So we pass in the data, we pass in the address, and we write to that specific location. And the pins on the right side are the group of data that uh, we uh, read when we are going to read from the memory. Uh, let's attach um, buses and hex group to every group of um, um, inputs. So I'm going to insert a breakout, 8 bit breakout. You can use the arrow keys to fill up the breakout right and left. Make sure the bus and uh, breakout are connected. If you don't see a dot here, that suggests they are not connected. So move the bus a little bit up and down on the uh, breakout line so they get connected and you see the node here. We need one extra breakout at the bottom here so we can attach hex keyboards too. And we don't need to attach hex keyboard here. This is output. And after enabling show value, we see the values here. Well, we need binary switches for uh, driving uh, chip enable and um, write enable. So attaching one chip enable here, the write enable here. And then we need uh, to drive uh, 16 pins here, which can be given with uh, four hex keyboards. So let's bring four hex keyboards. You can control C and control V and uh, copy the hex keyboards. I'm moving the hex keyboards to the left to make sure they're connected. Okay, all looks good. And uh, we can start the uh, simulation now. Let's just stop the simulation, set the switches properly. We want the uh, chip enable to always be zero to be active. The write enable is the risky pin. We don't want the write enable to be zero by default because this is going to write into the memory. So we're going to keep this disabled, set to one after the simulation starts. And then, um, we start by writing um, some values to different memory locations. <clears throat> and we verify the memory works by reading the values back afterwards. 
Um, so let's enable show values. Um, here are the values that we want to write into the memory at three different locations. At location 0a, we want to write 2b. At location fc, we want to write uh, 36. At location 49, we want to write 87. Uh, we have to follow a five-step um, process to write every one of the entries. Um, the steps are pretty simple. We keep write enable set to one to disable the write enable. Then we set the address to the address we want to write the data. Then we set the data. Then we set the write enable to zero to enable the write and let the actual write of the data at the address happen. And then we bring the write enable back to one, making sure chip is not writing any other values. Let's just start with the first one. Um, set write enable to one, so chip uh, is not writing to any location. Then we pass in the first data, uh, first address 0a. So this is the group of address pin 0a. Um, then we set the data, data is 2b. Then next step, we enable uh, the write. So this value will be written. If you notice here, you see the value will be shown on the output. Then we immediately disable the write, switching this back to one. Um, so first entry is written. And as long as write enable is set to one, this is locked and memory is not writing any new values. Then we go to the next entry. Um, address is FC. Data is 36. Then we switch the right to zero, and then we switch that back to one. Data is now written in the memory. And as you can see, this is shown on the address pins. This is shown on the data outputs. Then we write the last entry. This is at address 49. Data is 87. Uh, we briefly enable write and then disable immediately. So our data is now written in the memory. So we are done with the write steps. Now we want to verify all the three values that we have written uh, can be read from the memory. Uh, we start with the first address that we wrote, 0a. And the expected data out now should be 2b. So that confirms the rate the write was successful. Then we look up the next memory location, FC. The expected data for this one is uh, 36. And this is what we are reading on data out. And the last data to verify is at the address 49. The address at 49 should be, the data at 49 should be 87. And this is what we see. So this is also verified and confirms the correctness of uh, this uh, module. Um, can stop the simulation and save this file as dmem testbench. Um, and that's uh, uh, how we create instruction memory and data memory. Notice that the write enable pin is the risky pin, and we only set this to zero only when we have the address and data set and we want to write into the memory. Otherwise, this should always be set to uh, one. So making uh, write pins disabled. That's the end of the video. Now we have um, data memory and instruction memory in the CPU project library. And um, our library is uh, getting populated with um, most of the components we need for creating the CPU.